Good day to you, beloved. Welcome again to this vlog and we are going to continue our topic of the secret of devoutness as part of our series God's, secret, God's Secrets Revealed in His Word. We will immediately switch over to the slide. So we already went a bit through this slide, but I want to still um, emphasize that God deliberately chose written words because a word, and you remember that in the past I've also talked about the fact that words are spirit, right? So what is the matter with words? Also spoken words or language. And I also uh, devoted one flock to language and leadership, remember? So language can betray our mindset. So the way we talk, that shows how we think, right? However, it's also the other way around. It works both directions. So if you are um, studying God's word and you automatically are focused on learning and growing into uh, God's word and into the realization of his will and of his plan, then automatically, because you are thinking and pondering it a lot, you are automatically taking over the, the usage of the scripture words. So I'm going to go through that later on, but you're going to adopt, automatically adopt uh, a pattern of sound words. And that will again it will also influence your mindset so both directions are applicable your words betray the way you think so the way you are using your words uh, people can hear how you think but also if you now adopt different words and not i'm not talking about outside in and such but you are pondering god's word and you adopt those words then that will also help shape your mindset so think about that so this is very this is a very um interesting but at least wise approach of god that he chose the written word all the words carefully chosen and crafted and chiseled for us so this way of communicating has consequences <laughs> so if god communicates with words written words it has consequences because one of them is a certain attitude as i said in the previous vlog an attitude of the student patiently studying because it will require patience and it's about what is really written so going to the root going to the um, the ground meaning of word the basic or foundational meaning of words not only the usage and the context which is very key but also the basic meaning that you can use everywhere as such so what is really written there because you know that jesus didn't speak english paul neither how it is exactly worded so how the words are chosen and obviously we already meant uh, we already went through that to whom these words are addressed and of course the time aspect in and for which time it was written and especially also the um, the perspective from which to look at it whether it be absolute or relative so it is about studying what is the contents of god's word 
And all this therefore implies certain qualities in the students, such as already mentioned, patience, a lot of thinking and reflecting and pondering, analyzing and making connections, very important, seeing that big picture. Sometimes you don't see it yet. Often you don't see it yet. But then you park something in the back of your mind until the time is right and Holy Spirit shows you all of a sudden you see the whole uh, the whole uh, 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 set of connections uh, enabling you to see the bigger picture. Also a critical attitude. It's about not taking nothing for granted and doing seemingly boring word studies so that the real meaning of keywords is discovered because that's what it's all about. And what is the result of such a approach? A marvelously growing, it's a process, eh? a marvelously growing realization and awareness of who God really is and what his love really means. And oh my goodness, uh, if, I'm th if, I, if I'm thinking about my own experience, it's always, I'm always getting emotional when I think about what God has done for us. Wow, and what Jesus has done on the cross. It's always like that. And ever greater realization of what the versatility of God's wisdom is and the extent of of his of his sovereignty so this is a huge deal it can only be accomplished uh, in between uh, quotes through study of his written word only then will you get an effort grow growing and sharper and more correct image of the true God. There is no other way. So, what is the secret of devoutness? Before I su switch slides, about the image of the true God, one little remark. Sometimes I am visiting a Christian Facebook group and uh, they are quite large some of them are large many people on them <coughs> however what i notice very frequently frequently is that people have they do not have the right image of god you know why because of all the well-known doctrines the christian doctrines i don't have to mention them now you know what i mean so this is the base this is god 101 this is foundational so the having the correct image of the true god can only be um, accomplished or yeah only be gotten if you study god's word and not the bible but god's word that means the uh, the root text the root language hebrew greek that's what I mean by God's word. So you study key words. What does this word mean? And then you will look for the etymology. Then you will think about it in that context. So that is study. And just as, um, um, just as students, scholars of scripture are uh, discovering who God really is by inspiration of Holy Spirit everyone can do that theoretically everyone can do that it's for humans so now what's the secret of devoutness that is the correct again correct education concerning the living and true God and of course also the realization of it so only education is not enough obviously 
also realization and that can only be granted by God. That's faith. Faith to believe that truth, that piece of truth. So only if you have an, a correct image of God, the image He gives you through His Word, and then realize what that really means, only then can you display the right attitude outwardly, accompanied, obviously, by the right works. And that is true devoutness. But we are not finished, not by a long shot. <laughs> so let's look at this picture. This is the correct one. Because the horses are supposed to pull the carriage. Right? So the horses embody education and the realization, faith the right education, the correct education, and then the correct attitude and behavior, the works, follow automatically. And then it is true. Then it is true. So, first light, then fruit. Look at the trees. They cannot bear any fruit without receiving light from the sun. Impossible. So now we are going to further dissect the passage at hand. So again we read, And avowedly great is the secret of devoutness, which was manifested in flesh justified in spirit, seen by messengers, heralded among the nations, believed in the world, and last but not least, taken up in glory. I hope someone can say Amen. <laughs> so let's start with the first one, avowedly great. What makes this secret avowedly great? It looks simple, but it is not, if you th really think about it. First of all, it's uniqueness. Have you by now discovered or concluded that this uh, secret is very unique? Do you now grasp it in such a way that you by yourself conclude that this secret is very unique? How about its scarcity? Especially in this era. Well, because well, this era is, uh, wow, in this evil, wicked era. But still in this era where is an open window of grace. Have you discovered for yourself the scarcity of this secret? I'm talking about the secret, right? Not devoutness. The secret of devoutness. And how about the last one? The enormous role it will visibly play in the coming eons, but especially the fifth eon. When I say the, the coming eons, I mean especially the, the fourth eon in the heavens and the fifth eon both heavens and earth. I'm not going to say too much now yet. You will know it at, in the end of this topic. <laughs> but it will play a huge role. I can assure you that because this secret is truly Avowedly great. We continue with the second one. Or let's see. Yes, we still have a little bit of time. Let's take another one. Manifested in flesh. How about that one? This secret was manifested in flesh. 
think about it. What was manifested or revealed, if you want, in flesh? We know that it's the Logos already. The Logos became flesh. Flesh. We already went through that. John 1.14 Is that all? How about the people who have been chosen long before their birth in advance in Christ? How about those people who receive faith somewhere during their lives, therefore receiving God's righteousness on them? On them. We're going to read that, that piece of uh, scripture. And I say, this is just my view, both parties, both the Logos and the chosen ones, and I'm talking body of Christ here, of course, both parties above, i.e. the Christ in the future, together carry this secret in them inside of them let's take a look sorry let's see at the very well-known passage in romans 3 21 22 yet now apart from law i repeat apart from law a righteousness of god is manifest being attested by the law and the prophets yet a righteousness of god through whose faith uh-huh jesus christ's faith for all and on all who are believing for there is no distinction in the next point we are going to go through that but I just wanted to leave it here with you. There is no distinction. Why does God word, uh, God's word mention this? Because everyone eventually will follow. Everyone will have God's righteousness on them. Why? Because everyone eventually will believe will be granted faith by the God. That is the reason. So let me leave it there with you and I will end this vlog and continue with the next one because we still have some slides to go through. Thank you very much for your attention. See you next time.